So this video is for everyone loving flowers and nature because today I'm showing you how I painted sunflowers in a little bee eater and while I paint I'll be talking a bit about nature journaling and just how you can also start with your own nature journal sketchbook if you would like to try it out. So if you are new to my channel, I'm Janet Bester, a South African artist and I want to thank you for joining me. If you are already subscribed, welcome back. So as you can see I did not plan or sketch out any outlines for the page I'm painting my time was limited so I just dived right into painting and figured it out as I continued. So while I sat on my porch and studied the sunflowers it started to rain and it was just a lovely afternoon for painting and journaling. You will notice that I use different techniques, sometimes I use dry brushing but also um, I use wet in wet techniques here and there and to create a softer background I use paper towels to lift some of the paint and make interesting marks in my background. So let's paint a bit and then I'll tell you some more. So first I want to tell you the story behind the sunflowers on my table. So my husband surprised me the one day with beautiful sunflowers that he picked along the road on his way home after work. And they filled my kitchen with yellow sunshine for a few days. But when they started to wilt and lose their petals I took out my nature journal sketchbook and just wanted to try and capture their warm sunny colours before they were gone. I aimed for capturing the way that they made me feel. As I was painting I thought of farms with fields of sunflowers, the ones we usually see when we travel and it made me feel a bit nostalgic as it's been a while since we could travel anywhere with lockdowns and the pandemic. But that is what influenced me to paint a zoomed in version of a sunflower field. Now some bee eaters also visited my garden that morning so as I painted the sunflowers I thought to add one of them together with a bee to complete the page. And at the end I also scribbled and doodled a bit after I painted. I also added a few outlines to my sketches and wrote a few notes all over. If you already followed some of my videos you will know how I love my um, outlines on my sketches. So here I'm starting to paint the European bee eater. Let me give you a little bit of background on my nature journaling. Well, I'm a busy mom and I have lots of responsibilities so there's always chores to do at home. And not always time to sketch and paint and do some nature journaling. But I really found it helpful to make time in my schedule for just sitting outside a few minutes each day and at least once a week I try to do some nature journaling for an hour or two. I also make a point of um, walking through my garden and trying to notice interesting things and if I see something interesting I like to take a photo or two that I can use as a reference picture on a later stage maybe on another rainy day or even at night if I get some time to paint so that's a tip if you also have a hectic schedule if you want to draw something and don't always have time to do it straight away take a reference picture for later you will see in the video how I'm referring to the photos of the bee eater and the bee on my phone while I'm painting. So how has nature journaling been helpful to me? Well I found that being outside and observing birds and nature and just taking in fresh air helps me to stay more positive and improve my mental health even if it's just a few minutes at a time. Being creative helps me to recharge, de-stress and take my mind off negative things.
So since I've been doing this, I actually started to notice so much more things going on in my own backyard and garden. I'm fascinated by all the insects and birds that I haven't really noticed before. Here I want to add that you can still enjoy nature even if you are stuck indoors by just looking out of your window. You can notice the clouds and make notes of the weather patterns or even just the birds that fly by. You can also make notes and sketches about indoor plants or perhaps sow seeds in a pot and place it at the window window and write down and sketch your observations. I've actually hanged a little bird feeder near one of the windows where I always sit and work so even on the days that I'm just indoors I can still observe the birds that visit the feeder. So if you want to try out nature journaling and haven't um, really sketched before, you don't need much to get going. You can just start with what you have, a paper and pencil will do. Just remember if you want to use watercolors as I did, you need mixed media paper or watercolor paper to get the best results. But the most important thing, if you are a beginner um, artist or starting with a new hobby, the secret is just to enjoy the process and not to be too hard on yourself. Do not compare your first sketches to someone else's um, sketches, especially artists who've been drawing and painting for many years. Nature journaling is not about creating pretty pages but rather gathering information, learning to observe and having fun while doing so. It is like keeping a visual diary of things you've seen or find interesting and the great thing is that if you keep at it and do it regularly you will make progress and see how your skills grow with each page that you fill. But please don't let sketching frustrate you and cause you stress, it must be relaxing and fun. So keep it perfectly imperfect like I do and just enjoy the process no matter what the outcome is. So here you can see me adding the outlines. I've also used the technique of um, paint splatter so that it can add some more interest and um, variation to my background. I'll soon take you on a sketchbook tour to show you some of the pages I've recently done. And from now on I will also record as I complete any new pages so that you can follow along. I really hope that I can inspire you to also get outside and start observing, sketching and journaling if you haven't been doing that yet. You are most welcome to follow along on my art adventures and creative journey by subscribing to my channel. And if you've got friends that love nature and need some inspiration, please also share my videos with them as well.
So you will notice that I use white ink to add some highlights. I use jelly roll pens. You get them in different sizes and they are waterproof. I also used black ink for my outlines and my notes. Yeah, I used the Pit Artist pen sets from Faber Castell. These pens are also waterproof and they are excellent for mixed media projects. I love using them. I also sometimes use the Pigma Micron pen so you can explore using different pens and different inks but I would suggest that you look for waterproof ink especially with your watercolors. So if you want to paint after you already done your outlines then there's no problem you can add water to your page. So to me this was like painting sunshine on a rainy day. I made notes about the sunny yellows, I wrote down the name of the bird and described the bee and added a reminder that we must keep trying to be positive and humble. Although I wrote bumble because it's a little bumblebee. So thank you for watching my video until the end. You are welcome to leave a comment and tell me if you are new to nature journaling or if it's been something that you've been doing a while already. And if you're new to watercolors and you would like to learn more about painting with watercolors, you are welcome to watch some more painting demos that I have on my channel. Happy nature journaling and keep safe.